Welcome to Capsule RN, where nursing school just got easier. Meet Violet, a three-year-old female patient at the local surgery center. She's about ready to have her tonsils removed, and the nurse is listening to her heart rate. What finding will the nurse likely chart after discovering that Violet's heart rate slightly speeds and then slows down with each breath? Is it A, bradycardia, B, respiratory sinus arrhythmia, C, sinus rhythm, or D, tachycardia? To answer this question correctly, we first need to know, what is pulse? Pulse is the vital sign that measures the heart's rate, rhythm, and strength. Let's talk about each of these. Heart rate measures how many times the heart is pumping blood in one minute's time. The normal rate for an adult will be 60 to 100 beats every minute. If the rate is less than 60, we call that bradycardia. If the rate is more than 100, we call that tachycardia. Next is heart rhythm, which is just that, a measurement of the heart's rhythm. The rhythm can be categorized as either regular or irregular. A regular rhythm means that the interval between each beat is the same, such as An irregular rhythm means the interval between each beat is not the same, such as And lastly, there is pulse strength, which measures how strong the pulse feels between your fingers and can be categorized on a scale such as absent or zero, weak or one plus, normal 2 plus, strong 3 plus, or bounding 4 plus. In case you miss putting this together, a pulse can be both heard by listening through a stethoscope and felt by placing your index and middle fingers over an artery pulse site. Never use your thumb to check a pulse as there is a pulse in your thumb and you don't want to count your own pulse accidentally. When feeling a pulse, it is very important to check the right and left pulses on the body simultaneously to make sure they are equal in strength. However, never do this when you check the carotid pulse, as checking both carotid pulses at the same time could cut off blood flow to the brain. There are a number of pulse sites on the body. The temporal pulse is located in front of the ear and can also be felt slightly above that in the temple region. The carotid pulse is located on the side of the neck. This is a site you will use to check a pulse during adult CPR. The brachial pulse is located on the inside of the upper arm and is used for taking blood pressures as well as for checking a pulse during infant CPR. The radial pulse is located on the thumb side of the inner wrist. This site is a very common site used to check a pulse on adult patients. The femoral pulse is located in the crease at the top of the thigh between the leg and groin. The popliteal pulse is located at the back of the knee. The posterior tibial pulse is located on the inner side of the ankles. The dorsalis pedis pulse is located on top of the foot, and the apical pulse is located on the left side of the chest where the heart is. This pulse site is used to listen to the heart with a stethoscope during a head-to-toe assessment. There are a number of factors that can affect heart rate, making it higher or lower. Being aware of these factors will make you a better nurse, so let's talk about these. The first factor is pain. Acute pain will raise the heart rate in no time. If your patient is in pain and their heart rate is elevated, giving ordered pain medication is key. Next is age and gender. Since children have smaller hearts than adults, and females generally have smaller hearts than males, children and females will naturally have higher heart rates than their counterparts. The smaller the heart size, the less blood that can be pumped out with each beat. So to compensate, the heart rate increases so more blood can be pumped out in one minute's time. Then there's fitness. Athletes and those who work out a lot will often have lower heart rates. The reason for this is that a strong and worked out heart muscle is able to pump more blood with each beat, so it doesn't have to pump as quickly to supply the body with adequate blood. Seeing an athlete's heart rate in the 50s is a very common occurrence. Then there's activity. Any type of exertion will raise the heart rate, while sleep and rest will lower the heart rate. Next is emotion. Anxiety and stress will raise the heart rate, while peace and calm will lower the heart rate. Then there's hydration. Hypovolemia, or a low volume of blood circulating in the body, will lead to an increased heart rate as the heart will need to speed up in an attempt to get more blood volume into circulation. The doctor may order a fluid bolus in such a situation, and once that fluid bolus is given, you should see the heart rate go down to a more normal range again. Next is temperature. A fever will often raise the heart rate. 
Then there are medications. Certain medications can lower or raise the heart rate, either as the main purpose of the medication or as a side effect of the medication. For instance, beta blockers like metoprolol that are often used for blood pressure will decrease the heart rate, whereas albuterol used for breathing difficulties can increase the heart rate as a side effect. Next is pathophysiology. Things going on in the body like infection, heart disease, electrolyte imbalance, arrhythmias, and thyroid disorders can all alter heart rate. Then there's position. The heart rate will decrease the more horizontal the body is. For instance, a patient's heart rate will be lowest when lying down and will increase when sitting up and increase even more when standing up. And then lastly, there's breathing. Heart rate increases with faster inhalation, whereas slowly exhaling or holding the breath will lower the heart rate. What do you do if the heart rate is too high or too low? There are three things you want to do. Take a full set of vital signs, notify the doctor, and take appropriate nursing action as ordered to help treat the cause of the problem. There is one last piece of information that is helpful to know, especially when caring for children and younger adults. It is normal for the heart to slightly speed up when a patient inhales and slow down when the patient exhales. This is a normal finding and is called respiratory sinus arrhythmia. Remember Violet? What finding will the nurse likely chart after discovering that Violet's heart rate slightly speeds and then slows with each breath? Is it A, bradycardia, B, respiratory sinus arrhythmia, C, sinus rhythm, or D, tachycardia? If you said B, respiratory sinus arrhythmia, you are correct. Respiratory sinus arrhythmia is a normal finding often found in children and younger adults. Thanks for being part of the Capsule RN community. If this video added value to your studies, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. We are excited about releasing more and more content in our continued pursuit of making nursing school easier.